was essentially sold to Canadians as a way to advance our foreign policy priorities abroad. But I, you know, I really can't wrap my head around why paying old people in other countries to talk about their sex lives would have anything to do with advancing Canadian interests abroad. This is the Canadian Taxpayers Federation podcast. We're dedicated to lower taxes, less waste, and more accountable government. We've got a really special segment for you here, folks. Uh, joining me right now are my two friends, Franco Terrazano. He's holding down the fort in Ottawa, also known as Mordor. He's our federal director. And Ryan, Ryan Thorpe is our crackerjack investigative journalist and these two tag teamed on this next story <laughs> don't say don't say tag team don't say tag team no <laughs> no, no, no right so on that note for anybody listening to this in the car with the kids this is not g rated okay the language we're going to be using we're going to be quoting things but it's super gross don't let your kids listen to this if that's not for you. Okay, you have been warned. Okay, so Franco and Ryan, we've got a huge win to celebrate here from the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. The government just announced that it's going to scrap the Mission Cultural Fund. And this only came about after we blew the whistle on some of the weirdest spending ever. Franco, can you describe some of this spending for the audience, please? Oh, it's crazy. I mean, you had bureaucrats who spent more than $12,000 paying seniors in other countries to talk about their sex lives. Yeah, you heard that right, folks. The government of Canada <laughs> spent thousands of dollars so seniors in places like Australia, Austria, and Taiwan could talk about their sex lives in front of a live audience talking about their first time, best time, worst time, last time that they had sex. Um, yeah, so the government of Canada, by the way, was even paying seniors in Canada to talk about their sex lives. We were outsourcing old people sex stories to seniors in other countries. That's outrageous. Now, Why weren't they just oh, paying Canadian seniors? <laughs> keep keep the money in the economy, so to speak, right? Create jobs here in Canada. Now, um, you know what would have been a better use of tax dollars? Paying seniors to talk about anything else, literally anything else. <laughs> I'm kidding. All right. So that's a really gross and silly use of tax dollars. Uh, but folks, like I just said, Ryan Thorpe is our investigative journalist. Ryan, you dug up that information through an access to information request. And the CTF and our supporters have really, we've been the only ones yelling about this and shining a light on the Mission Cultural Fund and its massive amount of waste. Yeah, that's that's right, Chris. And so as a result, this is a really big win for the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, because um, I don't think most people would know that this, uh, you know, federal slush fund even existed, uh, if not for the work the CTF has done. So uh, through access to information requests, we were able to show, you know, the government, as, as Franco mentioned, paying seniors in other countries to relive their sex life on stage. Uh, the story ran in the National Post on May 10th. Uh, then we hosted our annual Teddy Waste Awards the following day. Before the end of the month, the government had announced that it was canceling the Mission Cultural Fund. Um, you know, from time to time, a couple of MPs would speak out uh, against the Mission Cultural Fund. But by and large, it was really only the Canadian Taxpayers Federation shining a light on this and speaking out against this ridiculous and obvious waste. Uh, and it was our supporters who were emailing their MPs and telling them to cancel the Mission Cultural Slush Fund. Now... We know <laughs> that the road to hell is paved with a certain thing. What was the intention of the Mission Cultural Fund, Ryan? Can you just give us a bit of, you know, the governmentees background on what its purpose was? Yeah, so essentially it was a slush fund for global affairs bureaucrats to waste our tax dollars around the world. Uh, the Mission Cultural Fund was created in 2016. Uh, it had a $1.75 million annual budget, and it was, quote, designed to promote our artists abroad while advancing foreign policy priorities. Um, but when we got the numbers, it was always way over budget. The average spending uh, was about $3.8 million annually, so more than double what its annual budget was. Uh, and it was essentially sold to Canadians as a way to advance our foreign policy priorities abroad. 
but I, you know, I really can't wrap my head around uh, why paying old people in other countries to talk about their sex lives would have anything to do with advancing Canadian interests abroad. Just even saying that out loud, I've had to explain this to some of my normie friends who aren't in politics. <laughs> They're just like, they what? You what? You're making this up. So, Franco, I know you did a really deep dive on this to figure out oh, sure where, where where our money was going. Um, I'm going to put this gently and I'm going to get you to say all of the words. So this wasn't the only the seniors talking about their sex lives or lack thereof to a studio audience uh, around the world wasn't the only tawdry bit that we paid for here. Can you describe some of the other shows that we paid for? Oh, I would love to. I mean, the fund was also used to spend 8,800 smackers, 8,800 bucks on a sex toy show in Germany. So we gave thousands of dollars so an artist named Peaches <laughs> could host a show featuring giant, I mean, giant <laughs> sex toy shows in Hamburg, Germany. I mean, maybe that's why the budget's always going over budget because of these massive sex toys, who knows? Now, the name of this show in Germany was called Whose Jizz Is This? Now, maybe maybe I'm a little bit old fashioned, folks, who knows? But if the Germans wanna have their sex toy extravaganzas, maybe they could pay for it themselves, not rely on taxpayers' money coming from Canada. Can't even. Okay, Ryan, you're up. Um, what were some of the more PG <laughs> examples of waste coming from the Mission Cultural Fund, please? Uh, well, I mean, these sex shows were pretty crazy, but uh, what really frustrated me about the Slush Fund is that it was essentially used to promote the work of people who were already famous. Uh, so through this particular Slush Fund, the Fed spent more than $50,000 on a red carpet photo exhibit for Canadian rock star Brian Adams. Uh, yes, the same Brian Adams who sings The Summer of 69. Uh, the exhibit included photos uh, Adams took of his famous friends, uh, including the prime minister. It included a large black and white photo of Trudeau, half turned towards the camera, dressed in suit pants and a white button up shirt with his sleeves rolled up. Uh, the government also gave uh, Margaret Atwood, you know, one of the most famous Canadian authors of all time, yeah. uh, nearly 10 grand to promote one of her new books in Australia. One of her books, 8 million copies was sold. So yeah. I'm pretty sure Atwood has enough money to fund her own promotional tours. Folks, folks uh, just to interrupt, Ryan. For If you yeah. don't know who Margaret Atwood is, she's the lady who wrote the book, The Handmaid's Tale, the one that became a huge Netflix series. She's not hurting for cash. So go ahead, Ryan. Yes, no, it's a, it's a good point. And, but the Mission Cultural Fund was also used to fund a $15,700 exhibit of Lynn Johnson's cartoons in Washington, D.C. And for anyone who doesn't know, Johnson is the famous cartoonist whose work has appeared in more than 2,000 newspapers around the world. Okay, so uh, let me just jump in here because the crazy thing about that cartoon spending in Washington is that it went 800 bucks over budget. Okay, so not only was this just a complete waste of money, but the government can't even keep its cartoon spending on budget. <laughs> okay, folks. Um, okay, so look, scrapping the Mission Cultural yeah. Fund, this absolute waste of money, this slush fund, it, it, it really is a very big victory. And it's a very, very, a, a very, very, it's a very big victory for the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. We're really the ones who are shining the light on this. We're really the ones making noise about this. And it was really our supporters day in and day out, uh, hammering the government with email, staying on top of these bureaucrats, letting them know that we're keeping an eye on this. So kudos uh, to our supporters for staying engaged. And this is a good example of some of the wasteful spending that we're able to eliminate if we stay active and keep the pressure on. But you know, no victory is, is everlasting. We've already seen the government say, quote, cultural diplomacy initiatives go beyond a dedicated program and funds and that diplomats will also have the option to use other funds to advance cultural diplomacy, end quote. Huh. Uh -huh. Well, uh, my spidey senses are tingling because that sounds like the government isn't done wasting your money yet. So we have to keep an eye 
on the go- the government, particularly global affairs bureaucrats. And we need to make sure that those bureaucrats don't just take the money that was saved by scrapping the Mission Cultural Fund and stash it into another sort of this type of slush fund elsewhere. Exactly. You know, if we're over the target, so to speak, they're going to panic and cancel something as big and glowing as the Mission, Mission Cultural Fund. But for better or for worse... They will try to distribute the money elsewhere and figure out a way to do it. Uh, Ryan and Franco, thank you so much for exposing this, so to speak. Uh, this is a huge waste of taxpayers' <laughs> money. And just, to, ser- just seriously, folks, just to give people some hope. Every now and then, we will all get emails here around this table saying, why bother? Why fight? They're going to waste your money anyway. This is why, folks, because if we shine a light on them and we ridicule them and we pillory them enough, they're eventually going to squeak and stop wasting your money. So keep up the fight, folks. You know, uh, I've been thinking to myself, you know, sex toy show, sex stories, Brian Adams, the summer of 69. There's got to be a joke in there somewhere. Maybe. Maybe.